innovation ecosystem. One is really connection at a time. We create connections, we create jobs in both Israel and in Michigan. And we do that by building partnerships between startups, small businesses, medium, and even large businesses in both Michigan and Israel. Between their knowledge and their inventorying of both markets, their professionalism and the connection is made. I mean, to me, that's a whole value chain. It's a whole suite of services that I get as the state of Michigan by working with Michigan Israel Business itself. Israelis are known for their innovation. A lot of Michigan businesses are wired the same way. We faced adversity. We've looked adversity in the eye and we fought back. When we take Michigan's business leaders to Israel, it's a life-changing experience for them. There were experiences like going across to Beersheba and seeing this brand new innovation community just building up out of nowhere and this really intense, multi-layered collaborative environment that was all aimed at let's do the best we can as this small nation to just be a leader in, in new thinking. And it was really profound to me. So I do see MIBA as a bridge. It's a connector between two cultures, within two countries that can come together for the betterment of both parties. The United States has always been a country that has welcomed innovators and innovations. We also able to purchase those innovations and mass produce them for the benefits of many more than if that technology just stayed in Israel. I now have direct contacts with leaders of Israeli companies that are doing some amazing things. Likewise, I have now established a channel for potentially helping Israeli innovation enter our market. There are some really great ways to have bi-directional business value, bi-directional cultural value, and bi-directional economic value that come out of those connections that get made through MIBA. If we have some businesses that want to think big and think differently about how to grow and accelerate their economic prosperity, I would encourage them to reach out to the MIBA because we can connect them to opportunities in Israel that could rapidly accelerate their own economic growth models. Hello, good morning, Michigan, and good afternoon, those um, joining from Israel. Uh, we are very excited to bring to you Experience Innovation. Uh, it's the Michigan Israel Business Accelerator's uh, uh, initial uh, kickoff to this series. We're focusing on Industry 4.0 today, and we want to welcome everybody, um, both on the Michigan side, and certainly thank and welcome our five panelists from Israel. Uh, my name is Bernard Borges. I'm the Director of Ecosystem Development here at Michigan Israel Business Accelerator. Um, for those that uh, Michigan MIBA might be, you might be new to us, I just want to give a quick explanation of who we are. Um, so we're a nonprofit supported by the state of Michigan, our partners at the Michigan Economic Development Corporation and other nonprofits as well as corporations, members. Um, they all support us and our mission. Um, and if you read our mission, uh, what I really want to focus on advancing Michigan's innovation ecosystem, one Israeli connection at a time. And that's uh, today. Today is a great example of, of one of the ways we do that. Um, Israel, as as you, if you tuned in early enough to see the video, Israel is always recognized as one of the most innovative countries in the world. And we know that Michigan can benefit from that innovation. It's why we exist. And one of the ways we and what we're doing today is uh, is is showcasing just just five of the so many um, uh, great Israeli innovations that we've seen over the years, um, and uh, and and we're bringing it to you. We're bringing it to you so you can see it, so you can uh, experience it firsthand. Um, you can see the solutions, um, see what kind of results they can uh, accomplish for your company and as a result, make your company even stronger than it is today. And so again, one of the many ways that we bring Israeli innovation uh, to Michigan. Uh, real quickly, again, our, our services, what MIBA brings to the table, we work both on the export and import side. We um, work with companies that want to export to Israel, and we certainly work with a, a lot of uh, Israeli companies that want to um, come to the US and come to Michigan, and we want them to uh, to, to use Michigan as their way of getting um, getting into the U.S. market. 
Uh, we also run trade delegations both to and from Israel. We'll take groups of companies uh, to Israel and we'll host companies here in Michigan. Again, all trying to, um, with the focus of making those great B2B business connections that'll bear fruit in, uh, for both, both companies, both sides of the, of the, of the pond, if you will. Um, real quick on the trade delegations, we are very excited that we're going to have a trade delegation in November going to Israel um, after obviously a long uh, break from taking those because of COVID. Um, so we have a defense focused uh, trade delegation uh, going to Israel in November around their ISDEF conference. Um, you can go to our website at michiganisrael.com to, to learn some more about that or, um, and, and get a hold of us. Uh, other things we do, B2B, B2B matchmaking is what we do, right? it's what we're, re we're really best at and what really um, advances both ecosystems uh, the most. We also do innovation consulting. So if your company is just not, uh, just wants some help figuring out what kind of innovation you need um, um, and, and help identify those, those gaps in your, in your businesses, we can come in and help you do that and then find the right uh, solution providers um, and bring them to you. So. All right, without, uh, I want to get into this, this uh, experience innovation. We are excited to be launching this series. Uh, um, it's really, th these five companies that we're, we're bringing to you today are a perfect example of why we even created this series. Like sometimes we, um, Scott Hippica, our CEO and I are on, on the phone with, uh, with anywhere from you know, three to 10 Israeli companies uh, a week. And sometimes it's really easy. We know exactly um, who they should be talking to here in Michigan, and we can make that phone call or use our network and make that phone, make those phone calls. But sometimes we see some amazing innovation, like these five companies that we're seeing today, that their their solution can apply across the board. So many different companies in Michigan, and we want to just get on a mountaintop and and uh, and and and, uh, and amplify that message and get get that message out um, get these companies message out to so many companies and this is our way of doing it it's uh, instead of individually trying to call every uh, every all 6200 um, manufacturers in Michigan we can expose uh, these companies all at once and that's what we're trying to do today um, real Quick on the, our, our part, I've mentioned our partners, our great partners of, at the MEDC. Um, they really have made a concerted effort um, uh, to really advance Industry 4.0 here in Michigan. Um, they have a ton of resources for all the Michigan companies can, can take advantage of. And we encourage you to go to that link at the bottom, michiganbusiness.org slash industry 4.04-0 and learn about it and get in touch with, um, with the right representatives to help you. Just a couple of examples, Automation Alley um, offers a, a free essential membership for all Michigan manufacturers and they can do an industry 4.0 leadership evaluation. Um, and the MMTC has training and roadshow um, uh, 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 events going on. And they also can do an in-depth technology assessment for, for small and medium businesses for free. So, so we're gonna get into it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'll introduce our first uh, speaker in a second. Um, just so you, for you Michigan companies, we're gonna post a survey, um, uh, a questionnaire that you tell us which of these companies you want to talk further with. Um, so we'll, we'll post that in the chat a few times uh, throughout this. We'll also, e also email it to you afterwards. Um, other than that, we're going to get right into it. Um, I'll ask Shimon to, um, I'll stop sharing my screen. Uh, ask Shimon to, to pop on the screen here. And hi, Shimon, thanks for joining well, well, us. And I will let you um, take your eight minutes. We'll start right now. Thank you, Bella. It's always a pleasure to collaborate uh, together. Do you see my screen? Yep. Perfect. So, so a couple of things about Inspector. We are the first uh, company that presented the autonomous machine vision uh, visual QA inspection product. And actually, we are very active in the US. We are uh, on the process to open our headquarter in uh, Detroit. Uh, in Michigan, uh, hopefully this uh, quarter or next quarter. Uh, we have our offices both in Israel and both in Europe to serve those uh, uh, regions. And we are focusing machine vision. This is what we are doing. One of our investors is Mave, and we are, have a lot of uh, experience with automotive, and I will leverage that in a second. 
We launched the Inspect OS 70 during uh, November 2018, and we gained some major traction from the market. And you can see a couple of the examples of uh, partners and companies that we are serving in multi different even industries. So to be an expert with machine vision, we must talk about traditional machine vision. When you're approaching to a plant and you have a specific uh, use case and challenge, you need to, to uh, find out what is the right camera, what is the right hardware, what is the right software to solve the specific visual QA challenge that you have in front of you. So it becomes very complicated because it's a machine vision expert dependent and it's expensive and usually it's pushed to the end of the line. So in many cases, it's becoming a project and heavily burdened on the plants. Uh, so not a lot of companies are doing it and those are doing it, they're pushing it to the end of the, of the line. So it is exactly uh, like I'm a former plant manager uh, and when I was approaching to a cockpit, uh, I don't know how to fly uh, the plane. So this is exactly what we are trying to solve. Uh, autonomous machine vision is taking this cockpit, the, the, the pilot cockpit and changing it to a simple driving like an autonomous car. You're entering to the car, setting the course, beats the use case, the visual QA challenge that you have in front of you and all the, all the spies done by the software. Think about the master brain that have a three AI engines uh, with deep learning capabilities that knows and tested a lot of industries, a lot of processes, a lot of application, and he knows what to do. So you get a box with anything that you need, both hardware and both the software embedded inside. So you can run the Inspector S7 in less than an hour on the lunch break. So without further ado, I would like to show you a clip that emphasizes what I'm showing, uh, what I'm talking about. We can, we can talk about a lot of uh, automotive application, but in this case, I wanted to show you a very simple PCB inspection that can show the variety of uh, challenges that, that you can solve. You just need to introduce a good sample, mark uh, the, the zoom that you want to do so you can see the product. Then marking the outline of the product. So the inspector SF can, can recognize the product that it's coming in front of it. And then you, you have the options to take off uh, areas that you don't want to do the inspection, or you can leave it as this way. And then mark the uh, uh, area that you do want to do the inspection, or you can mark the whole area to be inspected. And from this step, after you finish it, all the, all the optic parameters and all the challenges are done by the software. You don't, need to be, you don't need to be an expert. It's designed to be used by the guys on the line, which knows the processes very well. And that's it. Introducing 20 to 30 good samples, and you will see that in a second. And this, the inspectors S70 will be ready to, to, uh, to, to run. You see, this is the expertise of machine vision uh, uh, that doing it for all their lives. All what you see right now, all the optic parameters is done automatically by the software. You can see on the, on the left, you see the bar that's showing the progress of the Inspector S70. It's telling you what to do if you need to introduce uh, more samples. In this case, it's 20 to 35 uh, samples without the need to introduce bad samples, only good samples. And that's it. Done. Ready to go. It's showing you if it's a good product and it's showing you if, it, if, if it's a defect product and it's showing to you where is the defect. And you can see from upstairs, uh, from, from above, you can see the numbers of the product that was tested and what will be the, the def uh, defect and so forth. So this is just uh, one example. We are doing uh, unlimited uh, different use cases in variety of uh, uh, industries, uh, going through assembly verification, quality uh, verification surface, uh, barcode reading and so forth. And it is simple as it sounds. So if you want to have a demonstration, if you want to have a proof of concept, 
drop me an email and we are ready to go. Uh, and actually next week, I'm going to be in the US. Thank you very much. Great, right, thank you so much, Shimon. And Shimon, uh, just so everyone knows, Shimon is we would probably worked uh, the longest with Shimon and Inspecto, and we were very excited that they've chosen Michigan for their uh, U.S. headquarters. All right, Shimon, you can uh, cancel your video. And next up, I want to bring on uh, Itamar Yona um, from Princess. Uh, so these next three companies, Princess, Rolet AI, and Onvega, are all part of uh, Industry 4.0 Accelerator at Centropolis. Um, another great organization, another great partner of ours, um, and we're really excited to what, about what Princess does. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start the timer, and you can go. Can you see my screen? Yep, perfect. Wonderful. So hi everyone, nice to meet you. My name is Itamar Yona. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Princess. And we are a young startup company, three years old, uh, working on uh, developing an AI software solution for additive manufacturing workflow, AKA 3D printing. We are a great combination of industry veterans and leading AI researchers, what make us a, a very a, a interesting uh, a company which developed very interesting technology, uh, received a couple of innovation grants from the Israel Innovation Authority, UK, and also uh, been part of several consortiums worldwide, been uh, uh, recognized by several uh, uh, leading magazines such as Harvard Business Review, which we are pretty proud of. So, 3D printing, as you know, uh, been adopted in large scale in many industries and specifically aerospace, automotive and defense. Those sectors using 3D printing for several applications, starting from interior cabinet uh, through jigs and tools and even mission critical parts. They are doing so in order to create much more robust uh, uh, supply chain. Uh, and, and of course the COVID also emphasized the need uh, to mitigate the supply chain strategy. Uh, but still, uh, 3D printing uh, is complicated. Unlike regular office printer, when you just hit on the button, 3D printing is more like right click on God save us all because we have thousands of parameters which make this technology a bit more complicated to uh, adopt. And uh, those industries which are highly regulated, as you know, need to take all those parameters in their consideration. And uh, they're currently doing that uh, manually. They're using several uh, solutions and they are lacking with number of uh, experts. And even though it's been adopted in large scale, it's still not scalable because we need to invest a lot of efforts on uh, the training and the ramp up. And furthermore, one of the challenges of 3D printing is consistency and repeatability. Currently, if we would like to uh, fabricate a part in Israel or in Michigan, it probably will not be the same. And furthermore, if we will try to print part in the same printout, it probably will be a, a different. And this is a, one of the, I may say, the Achilles heel of 3D printing, the consistency. This is where a uh, princess is uh, coming in. Here in princess, we developed an AI software solution, which allow us to understand the intent behind the digital part and act upon it. That means that we know to use the wisdom of the masses in order to identify and uh, to, uh, uh, to predict what will be the optimal 3D printing technologies, materials, and in order to, uh, to eventually address the needs of uh, this specific part. So as I mentioned earlier, it's been currently been done manually and some parts, plastic parts can take something like 30 minutes uh, for initial uh, validation process up to a few hours when we are talking about metal parts. With Princess, it's been done instantly. And once again, it's based on a variety of technologies starting from the well-known and the polymer printing through the metal printing uh, with the understanding that it needs to be adopted uh, in, in the entire uh, company. All this uh, user interface developed as a one, two, three click. Uh, so it will be easy to use, very intuitive. 
uh, and it all designed as a knowledge management system. So eventually all the data that we are capturing starting from the geometry through the uh, parameters that relating to the printing process and the post-processing eventually been utilized in order to get predictions that much more accurate. So as I mentioned, it's been done instantly instead of investing a few hours on the validation, it's been done in a matter of seconds. The ROI is significant because it's not relaying on the experts and with that technology, we are able to allow wide adoption of 3D printing among the uh, company. And uh, as we see that, 3D printing is not a question anymore, it's a fact. And if you want to dominate the manufacturing industry, I'm more than welcome, uh, you're more than welcome to talk with us. Thank you very much. Great. Great, thank you, uh, Itamar, appreciate it. And before we, we get to uh, Uri, I'd like to just uh, throw out a quick commercial for our next one. So on August 17th, we'll have the second uh, um, version of this series of Experience Innovation. So it'll be Tuesday, August 17th at 9 a.m. We will be featuring the defense industry. So for you Michigan manufacturers on the line that um, are, are manufacturers and either are or would like to get into the uh, the defense um, industry, you'll want to tune in for that. So, all right, uh, Uri, I will hand it over to you. You can share your screen and you're off. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, before I share my screen, I would like to show you something amazing. Uh, this is my cup and I can grab it. It was amazing. Um, we humans do it all the time without thinking, uh, but imagine that you are a robot and you need to pick this cup. Uh, apparently you need to have a sensor that gives you position orientation, and then you need to do the motion. And usually it's a very complicated task for robots. So we are trying to simplify it. And uh, let me show how we do it. So the main problem that we are addressing is a huge expectation in robotics. $176 billion of expectations that robots will come in our houses, hospitals, not only manufacturing. But actually what is happening that many jobs are still uh, done manually. And uh, the big question is why? So one of the missing parts that we think it's ability of robot to understand the environment. It's called situation awareness. Already in autonomous cars, they understood that you need to have not only know your position, but also the position of the cars around you, signs and other objects. And this situation awareness comes from understanding of objects and their position in space. So there are many three division solutions that allow to do this. And uh, many people are doing it using three basic technology, usually based on lasers, projecting light or using multiple cameras. And all of them have all kinds of drawbacks. For example, size, precision, uh, even price. Uh, so what we do, we understood that humans do not need the lasers. You can close one eye and you can do this experiment uh, right now, and you can still grab an object and uh, drive your car and do a lot of things. So we created a software that mimics this uh, capability. It's software that connects to any camera. It could be even your smartphone camera and gives you six numbers, position and orientation of objects in space. It can look something like this. So there is many benefits of working with a simple camera like this. First, it's uh, we do not process point clouds. It runs very fast. Um, it can have a big precision because you can adapt the optics for that. It's uh, software, so price is very low. And uh, also we can manage and deal with objects that are translucent, reflective, coated, uh, sometimes posing the challenge for uh, active vision systems. Also, we allow our customers to adapt to any objects they have. We have a training software and, uh, and uh, inference software. Uh, you don't need the uh, CAD models. You can scan the object using the same sensor. And from this, you can extract the model and uh, it can be used in real time to give you this uh, position and orientation of any object. Also, it's a very easy integration. Uh, 
you can have your own equipment, your robot, your camera, whatever is uh, suitable for you. You just buy this uh, PC. Uh, what is happening that the robot sends us a request. We take the image. And from this image, we extract uh, the information and position of the object. And now robot can move and do something useful. Um, our primary uh, customers uh, and focus on robot manufacturers, sensor manufacturers, and robot integrators. Um, it's a very low cost product. It's only software. You buy your own hardware, and uh, it's really uh, very interesting in this uh, uh, type of uh, industry. So, on base, basic using this 3D pose estimation, you can build many different applications. You can think about picking place, bin picking, assembling parts, uh, even communication with the robot. Uh, we have a, a different customers in the US and also Europe, uh, Whirlpool United States, uh, Ford Dota Sun, Deutsche Telekom. Then the corporation decided to integrate uh, our technology in their future robotic arms and uh, many others in Israel. So how do we see the robotics? I think the next level of evolution will be not cobots, which are collaborative robots. It will be cognitive robots, robots that respond to changing environment and adapt to it like humans. And it will lead to a lot of benefits. Um, so let me show you briefly some use cases that we do. So it starts from very simple pick, uh, position estimation of an object. Uh, you can um, try it and do it very fast. And this, for example, reflective, very complex object. Uh, it can be used for pick and place of the robots. Uh, we can use it uh, for bin picking. And right now, uh, showing you how to do a bin picking using a very small, shiny uh, parts. This is how the robots see them. And uh, it extends to the uh, parts that are logistic, for example, picking all kinds of packages. Uh, in uh, metal parts, which are very small and shiny, it could be done using very simple cameras, a uh, very non-expensive way. Um, so we, try, we focus a lot of um, uh, manufacturing and we support different kinds of uh, robots, platforms and solutions. Uh, and uh, um, you're welcome to talk to us and uh, maybe I'll show you another applications. For example, it could be the same technology could be used in navigation. Uh, imagine that instead of moving your object, you can move the camera around the object and it, give you, it gives you position in space relative to some kind of object using a very simple camera, which is a very low power and not consumes your batteries and does not depend on the object side that you can need. So many different applications based on the same uh, basic technology. And um, maybe I would like to finish this and uh, the other stuff, but uh, thank you very much. All right, thank you. And uh, my compliments to all the presenters so far in terms of uh, how well you're doing from a um, timing standpoint. We really want to make sure we're keeping our Michigan companies moving. So thank you, Uri. That's fascinating technology. Love it. Um, uh, see some activity in the chat. That's great. Um, but we also posted a link to the survey. Um, and uh, uh, feel free to um, click on that survey and let us let us know which companies you want to um, connect with, and then we will do that. So, thank you, Uri. I want to bring on uh, next uh, Gon and Ziv from Anvego, um, or again another company involved in uh, um, our Industry 4.0 Accelerator. Um, Uri, thank you for joining us. You can and Gonan, I ask you to take it away. You're on mute, please. Sir. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Gonan Zaev. I'm the general manager for Onvigo US. Onvigo has been uh, selling its product for the past uh, two years. Uh, Onvigo's concept is bringing the voice AI to different environments, from uh, conversational type environments to command type environments. Uh, the technology targets uh, in terms of its usage uh, uh, verticals such as medical devices, industry 4.0, IoT gen general devices, which I'll show a few examples. And uh, Onvigo provides 
all these solutions in in different ways. And let me share just a few of our customers. Uh, we've uh, been involved with companies such as uh, GM with uh, future uh, cars where everything is controlled through voice. Um, we've done uh, interesting project with uh, GE Healthcare in terms of different medical devices. And I'll share also that we are just signed uh, an agreement with uh, Schindler Elevators to operate elevators uh, through uh, voice only. This came out of uh, you know, Corona and COVID times and how uh, people did not want to touch the, the different uh, buttons within the elevator and just everything is activated through voice. So just to get started, let me give you an idea on um, also related to Corona, we were asked to develop uh, an activation of um, ventilators through uh, voice only. And let me show you in a second. Uh, there it is. Hello, everyone. In the following video, I'll be demonstrating the operation of an ambivent respirator using Onvego speech technologies. With the rise of the COVID-19 pandemic, the world realizes the importance of operating devices safely without the use of touch. <laughs> Set Inspiron pressure to 40. Okay, setting the Inspiron pressure to 40. Reset to default. Defaults restored. Volume to 300 cc. Rate to 16 per minute. Okay, setting the volume to 300 cc and the rate to 16 press per minute. Stop action. Please confirm stopping the device. I confirm. Stopping. The video you just watched demonstrates one use case of Onvego speech technologies. The Onvego speech solutions operate offline, meaning cloudless, to ensure patients' privacy and safety. They work in noisy environments and on devices with limited resources, meaning they can be implemented for home appliances, vending machines, portable terminals for medical devices, or any other mission critical or general purpose device. You are more than welcome to contact us for more. Okay, now that you got a sense of uh, what we do, uh, let me get back to uh, the presentation. So if you noticed while um, the commands were being given, there was background noise and so forth. So we adapt very well to, to this background, uh, background noises and actually can operate, if you think about uh, floor manufacturing noise, warehouse, etc we operate fine and, and understand the speech. So, so what's, what's available? So we can work either offline disconnected from the cloud. We can be obviously connected to the cloud and operate uh, through that or use some sort of a hybrid uh, combination where we work off and online actually. So three basics in terms of activating this technology. First, it's recognizing the speech itself. Second, it's the understanding the context and then translating that into actions. And the, the third is conducting uh, the actual dialogue with, with the user. So as I said, we work offline online. It's a complete platform where you can develop uh, on your own, basically, the, the solutions that you need. So some other use cases, uh, we're involved in large projects in warehouse management where uh, there's a need to do uh, anything from count or control of uh, uh, products coming out of production line. And you can do that with voice only and don't need to start carrying around all kinds of uh, uh, visual devices and so forth, just uh, connect to uh, to our system and, and say what you're seeing, if it's account, et cetera. And, and we basically translate that into the ERP systems and so forth. 
another usage of our uh, solution, it's in terms of controlling the, the floor manufacturing via voice. Say you want to start an engine, you're on the other side of the room, you can uh, just give a command to start the engine, stop it, etc. We can tailor it so only, for example, certain people with, will have a specific voice signature can give certain commands. Also, our product is used in, in a very generic way. I, I'm talking about uh, with, with uh, Schindler elevators, how to control an elevator. On the other hand, applying voice to consumer applications, say activating a, a, a washing machine uh, via voice. That's, that's about it. I'll be glad to chat with uh, anyone uh, after the call and, and do some follow-up. Thank you very much. Conan, thank you very much. Um, we, the Onvego uh, solution is very interesting, um, especially in COVID time, but even, even without it, I think there's plenty of app applications. So thank you very much, Conan. You can uh, turn off your video now. Um, Again, I uh, wanted, wanted to uh, make everyone aware of the survey we posted in the chat. I'll post it again and I'll send it afterwards. Um, and last but not least, I have Tahi Patel from um, Quality Line. Uh, this is one of the newer companies we've been working with, but very fascinated by their um, technology. And so I will let Tahi take it away. Hello, everybody. Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Tzachi Petel. Uh, I'm the VP Client Solution for Quality Line. A um, little bit about Quality Line. We are a AI uh, software company uh, specialized in uh, manufacturing uh, analytic. Um, one of the um, interest uh, 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 in the company that uh, our uh, co-founders are uh, coming from the manufacturing uh, um, and have the challenge understanding very deeply. Uh, and this is what the company come to solve the challenges that they saw uh, back in uh, when they was uh, working on the manufacturing. Uh, we are uh, we are six and a half years in, uh, in, in R&D. And um, in the last three years, we uh, acquired uh, 25 uh, customers, which uh, have uh, more than 130 30, uh, plants of manufacturing. A few of our customers is from the Israel industry, but also from Europe and uh, worldwide. And you can see some of them in, uh, in a glance. Um, the journey, uh, the journey we are uh, see. Uh, uh, that uh, we are coming, uh, as I said, for manufacturing. Uh, we, we are doing everything uh, as the integration, uh, analytic and visualization to our customer by our platform. Uh, our AI technology is uh, separate for uh, or adapt to two area, one for the integration data, and I will talk about that later, and then uh, the analytic. And last and not least, that we put attention to our customer after engagement, uh, when we are doing the training and uh, con we, we don't want to say consulting to our customers, but working monthly uh, with our uh, uh, expert uh, in the company to uh, provide uh, the best uh, approach using our uh, tools capability. Uh, our vision, uh, and this is something that uh, is uh, uh, very unique to ours is to, to take any data in manufacturing and by doing that uh, we can have a providing a holistic approach to our customer and we're talking about one plant or multi plant in parallel as I mentioned we are a software company uh, but we also can provide on-prem solution uh, or SaaS solution uh, on the cloud uh, it really depends uh, the customer uh, engagement. Uh, some uh, error and defense will be on-prem and some will be on our cloud or their cloud. Um, but, but the most important is the capability to, to get any data from machine, from the test station, from the sensor, manual data, and of course, from the ERP and MES of the customer. 
Uh, one of, uh, as I mentioned, one of the challenges is uh, the data availability to our customers and data is uh, key. Everybody understands that in manufacturing, we have uh, plenty of data today uh, uh, from different uh, uh, sensor and uh, machine. Uh, and the challenge is how to take all the data uh, and, and analytic as uh, one end-to-end uh, -end control solution. And we found in, in working in the research and development a way to take any data from the plan and, and build for our customer data lake, a unified data lake. And then uh, we can run the analytic and visualize it to our customer, uh, uh, his uh, plan. Now, um, what we like to say is uh, you have in the left side all the kind of capability of data, uh, manual tests, repair data, machine, and so on. And what Quality Line is doing is uh, taking all of that and unlocked it to provide you uh, uh, the visualization uh, by AI technology. Uh, and we do that as a prediction and and correlation from the different data um, to our customer. Um, very important, and this is very, very key, because of the capability of taking any data uh, from the manufacturing, we don't need the API. And today, this is one of the biggest challenge to, in the industry, in the manufacturing. Each machine is talking different uh, language and uh, different structure, and also the sensors. And you, because you don't have a one language to all, then you need to invest a lot of uh, work in uh, data collection and data unify. This, this is something that we uh, build and uh, proud, and we are the only now. Today, we are the only ones that have the capability for doing that. Um, a uh, very key element for end-to-end -end control is uh, when we're proud that our customer is uh, uh, put uh, the ROI uh, as, a, as a key element in manufacturing, and our ROI is four to seven months to our customer, uh, and it's not relevant to the size of the company or the... Uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, the price is, uh, we can talk about later when it will be entry, more uh, in discussion how we, how we build the structure of, uh, for each individual uh, plant and uh, uh, customer. Um, last and not least, we, we, we see as the, as the, our journey as a two, one the integration layer and one the continuous uh, use. The integration, as I mentioned, is building with the customer uh, the data lake, a uh, data mapping tool that we will take all the data and building for him is uh, uh, one data uh, lake uh, uh, with all his uh, data. And then after that, uh, the continuous in real time, we are building a visualization to our customer and provide uh, in real time, and this is very key, in real time, we provide the prediction, correlation, and monitoring is manufacturing. Uh, when it's, uh, when it's uh, the same location or when it's uh, using manufacturing outsourcing um, in China or other location worldwide. Great, thank you, Tahi. Um, and, and I know you know companies can get overwhelmed right now with uh, with how many different um, AI data, big data um, uh, companies that are out there. But you seem to have broken through some of the uh, some of the challenges of that. And so we appreciate we really appreciate your uh, your solution and glad you can share it with Michigan Michigan companies today. Um, great. So we did. Uh, we, we want to take this time, we're finishing a little bit early, so I'm, we are very happy to give, um, <clears throat> give some time back to the Michigan companies. A couple big reminders of survey, I will post it to chat again, but we will also be sending it out um, via email. And, um, <clears throat> but we want you to not only to, whether or not you, you have decided to, to follow up with any of these companies, please click on the survey anyway, um, give us some feedback about this, this uh, format so that we can make it better for next time. Um, another reminder for our next one, August 17th, Tuesday morning, 9 a.m., we will do a defense um, themed um, uh, experience innovation webinar, and we'd love to have you join us for that. <coughs> and 
and, and lastly, I just wanted to like one more time, just wanted to really thank all the companies um, um, from uh, Michigan, uh, from, from Israel, I'm sorry, that came and took their time to, to share and certainly all the companies on the Michigan side um, for tuning in. Hopefully, you know, hopefully what you saw was a little appetizer of what they do. Um, and overall, this whole hour has been a little appetizer of what we do. So if there are other challenges that you are, um, uh, that you are experiencing and you want us to, um, to see, if, see, what, see what we can do to help you solve those problems, get in touch with us. We can find, or we are sure, we are very, very confident that there's someone over in Israel working on the problems that you're having and trying to solve, and we can make those connections for you. Great. Well, thank you. I will give you give all our Michigan companies the 15 minutes back that we uh, we we thought we were taking from you, and I hope you uh, enjoyed the program today. And we'll see you next time.